the brilliance of Erling Haaland, the dominance of Erling Haaland, the superiority of Erling Haaland. He is going to become a mythological football figure, isn't he? You know, the way that we speak about footballers, maybe from a previous generation, the way that we eulogize and lionize the likes of Pele, the likes of Puskas, the likes of Eusebio, the likes of Dixie Dean, that is what Erling Haaland is going to become. A superhero, incomparable to mere mortal footballers. When we now talk about Dixie Dean and Dixie Dean's numbers and what he means to Everton, we do it in a way that is more comparable to a superhero than a footballer. And that is exactly what Erling Haaland is going to become. A myth, a supernatural being, a footballing phenomenon. Another hat-trick, his second in a week, and yet another record broken. It's so easy for Haaland. He has seven goals in the Premier League already this season. It is August. In the history of the Premier League, the pantheon of great strikers to have played in the Premier League, nobody has scored seven goals in three games. It's yet another record broken by Erling Haaland. He is now averaging more than a goal a game. 70 goals in 69 games. It is an honour to watch him play. The variety of goals in his armoury. The second goal against West Ham. The touch finish. Bang! is comparable to the very best who have ever played the game. And we're all football fans, aren't we? Sometimes we have to remove the tribalism and appreciate that we are witnessing history in the making. What Erling Haaland is doing will be spoken about by your grandchildren's grandchildren. In the way that we speak about Eusebio, and you've seen it with your own eyes, how lucky are we? I guess we have to acknowledge the elephant in the room, don't we? Not everyone saw this coming. Erling Haaland will not live up to the expectation. I am so bored. Why, Why won't Flip he? It. Because, because, Flip he it. Isn't, because he isn't the player that everybody thinks he is. I think he'll do really well to score... If he scores 15, it would be a really good season for him. <gasps> yeah. That's it. I'm yeah, done. How many 15 do you think? goals. How many do you think? Yes. Me talking to Thogden there, suggesting that Erling Haaland would struggle to make it in the Premier League. I think we now can conclude that that will go down as the worst ever footballing prediction. I'm ashamed. My motivations were fair. My motivations were just. But I was wrong. So drastically wrong. And when you now think of all of the ridiculous predictions, the worst predictions that you have ever heard, I think there is now no debate that my prediction has to reign supreme. The worst I've ever seen is probably my own. Alan Hansen suggesting that you don't win anything with kids. Paul Merson suggesting that Kevin De Bruyne isn't worth anything like £50 million. And Gary Neville being so sure of a Manchester United win ahead of a 7-0 trouncing against Liverpool. But if you explore each one, I think you can rationalise it. So Alan Hansen, for example, suggesting that you don't win anything with kids, he was correct. Now, it looks bad, of course it does, and the headline is worse, but the reason why Manchester United won the league that year was because of the likes of Cantona, the likes of Steve Bruce, the likes of Peter Schmeichel, the likes of Mark Hughes. That's why they won the league, far more than the contribution from David Beckham, Gary Neville, Nicky Butt. It wasn't until the following year that that Manchester United team won the treble. Basically, Alan Hansen was correct. Paul Merson's comments about the Bruyne not being worth 50 million quid, they look wild now. They look incredibly misjudged now. But at the time, he would have seen Kevin De Bruyne play for Chelsea against Swindon and decided that he wasn't really cut out for the Premier League. Wrong. Incorrect. A misjudgment. Reactionary. But can we rationalise it? Not really. But it makes more sense than mine. And Gary Neville. Gary Neville suggesting that Manchester United would beat Liverpool that day again. At the time, it made sense. With hindsight, it's a bold and ridiculous prediction. But at the time, Gary Neville was giving it the due diligence that it deserved. And Manchester United were most certainly going into that game capable of beating Liverpool. So all of those predictions can be rationalised. Can I try, just try, to justify where I was coming from? I was a worn and broken man because of Timo Werner. So, the products from the Bundesliga had not worked in the Premier League. We had seen Jadon Sancho arrive and not pull up any trees. We had seen Kai Havertz arrive and really struggle to score goals. And we had seen Timo Werner arrive from the Bundesliga with a very impressive record of scoring goals in that league and be one of the worst Chelsea strikers to have ever played for the club. So, off the back of some Bundesliga players struggling, I suggested that Erling Haaland may find it hard. He finds it so easy, as West Ham discovered to their cost. He scored his eighth Premier League hat-trick 
his second in successive weeks. And I tell you what, it really does show you how beneficial a summer without football can be to footballers. I think it's interesting to try and work out quite how significant a summer off would be for Erling Haaland. So Norway failed to qualify for the Euros in Germany and the previous tournament, not that Norway qualified, but the previous tournament was played in the winter in Qatar. So Erling Haaland has had full summers off. So I imagine that Haaland is full of regret. I imagine that he would have been desperate to play in Germany at the Euros at the highest stage. But whatever regret and sadness he is feeling off the back of missing that tournament, his absence has actually done him a favour. Look how sharp he looks. Look how hungry he looks. Look how up for it he looks. Look how ruthless he looks. And compare it to, say, Ollie Watkins, who I think has been affected both emotionally and physically by the intense summer that he had. Not that he needs a summer off to enhance his performance. Erling Haaland has scored 11 hat-tricks for Manchester City, 24 in his entire career. And if any stat is going to blow your mind, it's this one. Since Erling Haaland made his debut for Manchester City, he has scored only six goals fewer than Everton Football Club have scored in their entire team. So Everton have only scored six goals more than the individual Erling Haaland. In that period, he has scored 70 goals. Now, who do you think finishes second in that same period of goals? The answer, I'm sure you know, is Mohamed Salah. But can you believe how far adrift Salah is compared to Erling Haaland? 31 goals behind. Erling Haaland has scored 70. Mohamed Salah has scored 39. Now, Mohamed Salah was one of the players that I referenced when I said that it was very disrespectful to forget about the established players, the likes of Harry Kane, the likes of Mohamed Salah. Because up until that point, I'd never seen anything like what Mohamed Salah was doing for Liverpool. And yet, Erling Haaland has blown that completely out of the water. And there is such a guarantee, in the way that Mohamed Salah is a guarantee, but it's even more significant. There is such a guarantee about Erling Haaland scoring goals. When? Arsenal dropped points in the lunchtime kickoff against Brighton. Manchester City had to play West Ham. At one point, West Ham equalised. There was never any doubt in my mind that Man City were going to win the game. And that is because of the guarantee that Erling Haaland brings. City won't lose. City won't drop points because Erling Haaland won't allow it. And a two-point advantage is already secured because of Haaland's goals. Two points. That's how many points City won the league by last year. They've already largely due to Chris Kavanagh, but they have already established a two-point lead over Arsenal Football Club. And the more good news, Guardiola is saying that this is the most keen and the best that he has ever seen Erling Haaland play. Apparently, he's staying on after training to do a little bit more because he feels so fit, fresh and hungry. Now, last year, Erling Haaland missed 15 games of the season and City still won the league. Imagine if he does keep fit. How many goals is he going to score? I mean, Guardiola joked. He said that even a defender with a gun couldn't stop Erling Haaland in this form. And I tell you what, it does feel true. There is no stopping him. When he gets going, when he's at full stride, he's like a tornado. Absolutely unstoppable, ripping up anything in his path. And it's completely true. There is no centre-half, with or without ammunition, that can stop Erling Haaland when he is in this form. And Guardiola's told us that he's working on his finishing. He's desperately trying to perfect the art of finishing. And we have seen it in those goals against West Ham. Just look at the precision and the ruthlessness around those finishes. It's comparable to the very best finishers that you've ever seen. Robbie Fowler would be happy with those finishes. And this is what I mean. We really are witnessing greatness. Erling Haaland is outscoring both Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. And yet, that is still not quite good enough for Pep Guardiola. And that's why City are the force that they are. They demand the very best. They demand the very best. They demand excellence from everyone. Even when you are doing your job virtually to perfection, the virtually is not good enough. Last season, Pep Guardiola flagged it. You might break multiple goal-scoring records, but you have to work harder off the ball. And there was an incident against West Ham United where Erling Haaland must have run 70 yards to make sure that West Ham United's attack didn't get anywhere. He made sure that the ball was put into touch and Manchester City could regroup. He charged 70 yards into his own half doing his defensive duties. He is not only the perfect centre forward, but he is rapidly becoming the perfect footballer. And to put this in context, let's compare, shall we? Just for the fun of it. Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo and Erling Haaland. Haaland has scored 200, yes, 260 goals for club and country at the age of 24. That has come in 315 games. Now, for context, at the same age, Lionel Messi had scored 197 
in 326. And Cristiano Ronaldo, 132 in 362. So Erling Haaland is on course to break even the most dazzling records. So there we have it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Really do appreciate it. Erling Haaland is the man. He is an icon. He is a supernatural. He will go down in history amongst the very best. For what it's worth, for the record, I don't think Erling Haaland will ever hear this, but for doubting him, not only was I wrong, not only am I apologetic, but I believe now that I have to fall on my sword and admit that it was the worst prediction ever recorded. And for that, I apologize. Thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a like. Please click subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I compared Haaland to Eusebio. I compared him to Dixie Dean. I compared him to Pele. Do you believe that's slightly too generous or do you think Erling Haaland really is that good? Let me know in the comments below. Have a wonderful day.